Uh, hello, everybody. The the game we'll be watching today or the late game situation is Northern Iowa versus Texas. This is back in, I believe it's 2016, uh, March Madness game. And so uh, we pick it up here. 36.5 seconds left to go. Northern Iowa is down by one point. Reenacting that shot. Hopefully get another chance. Let's see what Ben Jacobs does here. Because here's, here's the decision. Do you flatten everybody out and let Washington just have the ball so you take away the double team? Or do you want to pick and roll with eBay? Washington kick back. Carlson off the bounce and tacks. Texas has a timeout. Shot clock turned off. Taylor attacks. Short. Sure. Clock winds down, but he would not foul before five seconds. Before you get there, Washman has to hit them both. And I'm, I'm of the opinion that you foul under five because I, have, I can't remember seeing somebody making the first, missing the second on purpose, and then converting a two-point game, you know, two point of the game. So what the commentator is talking about here is he's saying if Northern Iowa goes up three, then they should foul Texas so that Texas don't have an opportunity to hit a three to win the game because he's saying he, he hasn't seen a scenario where someone makes the first one and miss the second one on purpose to get a rebound and score again. Like, that's just very rare. Two shots for the senior. Cedar Rapids. Anthony's on two. This is the second. Texas will have a chance to tie. So notice, Northern Iowa does have a timeout, but the commentator, and I guess they made they may have talked to the coach before the game or something. The commentator, if you hear him, he says he said he wouldn't take a timeout in this situation. So again, it's different schools of thought. His mindset is don't give defense time to to, to uh, set up. Let's just put it in the hands of a playmaker. Let him make a play. And this, ladies and gentlemen, this is why we take half court shots in practice all the time. Wow, so what a what a game between Northern Iowa and Texas. Um, again, a lot of different things that took place there. Uh, you know, Texas didn't have a timeout. The ball was in the hands of a playmaker. He just went and made a play, you know. And so, um, and then Northern Illinois, they turn around and they do the same thing. Good stuff. So today we're going to be talking about motivation. And this will go right into a discussion about the topic. Um, but I think it's, it's important for us to discuss as coaches, no matter what your X's and O's are, a, a big part of your job is motivation and, you know, and, uh, and, and influence, right? Uh, getting people to do things that they don't want to do, um, getting them really excited about, you know, doing the things that they want to do, right? And, and, and motivating them. But a lot of times the preparation part of it can be with things that you don't want to, that you might not necessarily want to go through, that you might not necessarily want to do. And so uh, as a coach, you got to figure out how to motivate your, your athletes and how they're individually motivated and then how to motivate them uh, as a, as a unit. Right. And so we start talking about intrinsic motivation versus extrinsic, extrinsic motivation. Uh, we're talking about the source of the, uh, of the reward, right? Um, this is basically like, it is the source of the reward, right? That, that's, that source of motivation. Is it coming from 
the inside or is it coming from the outside, right? You think about, you, I don't know if you've seen it, but in my generation, there's always like this picture, this graphic with like a donkey and uh, a carrot out in front of the donkey. And right, so that extrinsic, like the, the and basically what it's saying is like, and, and the, the person's riding the donkey and they have the carrot on the stick out in front of the donkey and donkey, that's what's gonna get the donkey to move. And and it's never gonna get to the carrot, but like that that ex that extrinsic motivation, like that that reward that's on the outside, like the donkey's just trying to get to the carrot, get trying to get to the carrot. That's what's getting them to move, as opposed to like it being something on the inside, right? That will get the donkey to move. You know, sorry, if this is this is the, the example that came to my mind. Um, but let's look, dive into a little bit more, right? So intrinsic motivation, the reward comes from within. So you're talking about pride, you're talking about satisfaction, fun, fulfillment, right? You're talking about um, someone wanting to be good um, just for the sake of being good, right? Someone who's just wanting to be the best, they're gonna, um, like, essentially, they, they're kind of, they, we, we like intrinsic motivation more than extrinsic motivation. Um, because you can always have the intrinsic motivation, right? It's always there. Whereas you have extrinsic, extrinsic motivation and where the reward comes from the outside, You're talking about trophies, medals, ribbons, plaques, money, all those type of things. And I would say, again, there's nothing wrong with those things, right? Uh, in and of itself. But let's, let's, let's think of this example right here. Imagine, um, you've probably played in some type of tournament where well, no matter the sport you've been involved in where there's like a consolation game, right? So you, so you're playing to like win this, this championship, this trophy and you lose. And so now you no longer have an opportunity to play for the first place trophy, right? If your motivation is uh, strictly extrinsic, then in the next game, whether it's the third place game or the fifth place game, you're not gonna play as hard, right? If, if, if your motivation is tied to that first place trophy and now you don't have the opportunity to win first place, then what type of effort will your coach or will your teammates get from you um, in the third, in the consolation game or in the fifth place game, right? Or some place, even the seventh place game, right? And so, but if, if the reward comes from the inside, pride, satisfaction, fun, fulfillment, you have the opportunity for that to, to receive, to achieve, to, to obtain that reward every single time that you play, every single time that you touch the field. And so that's why we, we like, again, it's nothing wrong with the extrinsic, right? Like money can definitely be a factor, right? Um, you know, it, it could be definitely a motivating factor to get people to do things, right? And now we can talk about not even just uh, in a particular sport, you know, in, in life and in and with your job and things like that, right? Um, but those other things, like I said, pride, satisfaction, fun, fulfillment, those things are always available to you. And I believe as a coach and as a former athlete, um, or, you know, as far as competing in organized sports, when it come from the inside, man, when those rewards come from the inside, like it don't matter if, you know, and, and pr you're not going to be, you're not going to be the person that dogs it in practice, right? You're going to, you're going to always be giving the effort because you, you plan for pride, you plan for fun, you plan for fulfillment. Um, so you're going to give the effort that you give in practice going to look like the effort that you give in games. Whereas someone it's only playing for the medal. Like, we, don't, you know, it's, it's rare that we give out, you know, maybe some people do, but you don't really give out trophies and medals in practice, you know? Um, so, you know, it's important. It's, it's important, um, I think, to, it's okay to have both, but if you can only have one, intrinsic is definitely the way to go. And remember, when we're talking about intrinsic and extrinsic motivation, we're talking about the source of the reward, and you want that, you want that reward to come from within because you can you can always obtain that now the internal versus external motivation now we're talking about the source of the driver right who is 
who what's the driving motivation behind doing what you do internal means the push comes from within right it comes from within the athlete external the push comes from outside the coaches the parents the fans um so again, we, we want this to come from the inside, right? We want it to come from the athlete because again, it's always within your control. You know, thinking about um, like the athlete, right? Who goes to the gym, you know, without like if their, their motivation is external, if it has to come from the coach, what happens when there's a player led practice? Right. What happens when they have to get in the they, they get in the gym to, to you know to get some shots up outside of practice? Maybe they don't even get in the gym. Maybe they lie about it, right? Or maybe when they get in there, they don't have the effort and the energy that's needed to actually improve. Because they need someone there watching and pushing them and 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 kind of driving them to do it. Whereas that athlete, where that push, that drive comes from within, I think they can do so much more. It's it's so much more they can accomplish right with with what they have i'll put it like that you might have some people who are just straight up talented and at the end of the day their talent can can win out but if they run across somebody with with equal talent or somebody with even a little bit less talent but they have that that push that drive from within and then you add that intrinsic motivation on top of that Man, like that's gonna be a tough one, tough, tough one to be because they can always, they can always um, turn it on. They, they can, they it stays on when that push comes from within. Um, you know, you think about the fans. Uh, you know what happens like now in COVID. If a person has that external motivation. I like the fans being in the stands and they really like that's where, where their big push comes from that big that big driving factor uh comes from that well shoot COVID, you know november december we can't have any fans so what that what's that person going to do right and so when we talk about things coming that that reward that source of the reward the, the source of the driver we want those things to come from inside as much as possible because again you know, as long as you're conscious like you have the ability to obtain that you have the ability to receive that right um versus it coming from the outside because there might be factors where it can't happen um you know so yeah so that's that's ex intrin intrinsic internal those are the directions that we want to go now here, here's another when we're talking about motivation uh direction approach versus avoidance motivation and this is a big one this is a big one and something that as a coach i'm trying to get better at right i'm trying to learn how to to accomplish this a little bit better because um and, and i'll go into the approach is moving towards something seeking something avoidance is moving away from or hiding right so for instance how we can out consequences for winning and losing drills, right? A lot of times it's team that loses, they have to run. And it's like, man, we're like, you know, we're punishing them to run in a sport where we want them and we need them to run. Um, you know, so you, you wanna have them to approach something, right? So sometimes the way we flip it is, um like the team who the, the the team who wins or the person who wins this drill like they get a they get a free like um almost like a get out of jail free card right where they get out of a running right so maybe we're gonna run after like free throws or something where it's not even about winning or losing but you can use it you can use you can get out of that right or right now we have like this prize bucket thing. And so sometimes the, it's like, hey, you can, uh, whoever wins this against that, that approach motivation, moving towards something, um, as opposed to, you know, as opposed to moving or trying to get away from something. Um, we, we had something this year where we had a certain amount of shots that from our position that we needed to do. And instead of like, if they didn't get it, making them run, it was you have to you know 
do these shots, you know, outside of after practice, get up this amount of shots at the practice, things like that. Um, so it wasn't always about like some type of negative consequence. It was like, okay, well, you know, this is the consequence like to help you get better, to help you make it next time. Um, as opposed to just putting you on the line and making you run or do wall sits or, or, um, or planks or whatever. Um, so yeah, this, this one is a tough one because the, the avoidance can be good. Like, you know, I've been in a lot of practices and I've said it out my, like, you do that again, you're going to run. And it, it can, it can, it can change things, right? But a lot of times that avoidance motivation um, is short term. And we, we want to, like, we want long term uh, results. And I'll say one time I actually flipped it, right? I actually did it where the team that wins is the team that's going to run. And I did it to see, to kind of check what people's motivations were, right? I wanted to see if people would would try to quit. If people wouldn't go as hard because they knew if they won, they were going to run. And I, and uh, but if you think about it, like it costs something new to win. It costs something to win. And so I wanted to see who's like, you know what, I'm gonna do what it takes, or I'm gonna win no matter what, right? Because the, the person that has that that mindset, um, they'll dive on a full full loose ball, knowing that like the consequence could be, you know, they get a strawberry, they they get a bruise, um, but they want to win. And so, and are they playing like they playing all out, right? They have that pride where they want to play all out, and so they not gonna let the fact that, you know, running. If they win and they have to run, they're not gonna let that stop them from trying hard. So here again, the use of physical activity is punishment slash motivation that creates avoidance motivation. You know, why would we want athletes to avoid physical activity? We want athletes approaching physical activity. We want them to be highly intrinsically motivated to do physical activity because that is what's going to make them to be great athletes. You know, I have a track coach who, uh, a friend of mine that I ran track with in college, and he is coaching at the college level right now. Um, but prior to that, he was like this phenomenal high school coach with national champions, world champions. Um, but he's like, I can't, like if they're late to practice or something, like I can't punish them by running because I want them to love running. So I don't want to have any negative association with running because uh, they need to run. This is track. And so they can't hate running. Uh, I don't want any situation where they're going to hate, hate running. And so, um, so these are things to be thinking about. And I think, of course, I think um, these are things that you can use even outside of sport. You know, as we're talking about motivation, the uh, internal versus external, the intrinsic versus uh, extrinsic the approach versus um, avoidance you know so you might be in a situation where um, on a job where you are in leadership and um, you know you want to what is a way that I can motivate my my my, my team um, how are they motivated can I get the the, the person that's that's motivated um, and they are, you know, they are extra motivated when we're getting paid time and a half, right? They're making overtime or whatnot, you know, how is it, can I get them to be motivated uh, when they're just regular, it's a normal day, right? It's not Black Friday or, or whatever it is that we'll have someone to make work crazy hours and get overtime, but it's just a regular day, day to day. Like, can I find a way to connect with them, to motivate them, um, to hopefully try to dive in and, and hopefully they can find that motivation from the inside to kind of do uh, as well as they possibly can do, right? Um, so at the end of the day, we want people who, whether they work at, you know, uh, the fast food line or they are working at Neiman Marcus, which is, you know, if you don't know, it's a high-end store. Um, Right, or whether they are in, you know, all all the jobs I've had, right? I worked in fast food. Uh, I have worked, um, you know, I was working as, as uh, man, I'm, I'm blanking, sorry. <laughs> um, 
you know, when I was in college, I, I helped out at this group home, you know, I was working at a group home and, you know, totally different experience. And then, you know, I worked at the YMCA and then I was a, you know, a, a tele-supervisor. I worked at the Nike outlet. I worked in all these different things. Um, but, and I didn't like all of it, but I tried, I tried to do my job the, the best I could possibly do because my name was on it. Right. And I, like that's that pride and stuff that we talk about. And so I think when you have people that have, when you have that internal and that intrinsic motivation, it can go with you no matter where you are. You can hate your job, but still perform well at it because the things on the inside that you want to fulfill, that you want to make sure that you, that you get right. Um, so yeah, so this is, this is something to be uh, for you, for you all to be thinking about and go right along with our discussion uh, for this week. Uh, as always, please don't hesitate to reach out and, uh, and give me a call. Uh, well, reach out, email me. Um, and if you have any questions or concerns, but I'm excited to read uh, your, your responses to the discussion this week. All right. Have a good one.